where a man can come and feel at home, get a hot towel, shave, haircut, and comb. Come in for laughs and ice cold paps. Enjoy our club, made just for chaps. We do everything different here, you know, and there's a lot of things that are involved with that. Um, with with our haircuts, we, for instance, we'll sh we'll outline everything, or whatever, however you know, whatever length you want it. We outline everything first, you know, whether it's a taper or it's a rounded off or blocked off and back. We outline everything first with our outliner, and we shave everything after the haircut's completely done. And then we outline again. There's little things like that to paint the haircut on. And that's what turns it into art, you know what I mean? we definitely artists here in a big way. We've taken it on the road to shows, a lot of tattoo conventions. So we can show them, you know, that we are artists and we, we're serious when we set up, you know. People always leave satisfied and feel good, and that's, that's all I care about, you know. Specialties here, we do low and tight tapers, high and tight. We do uh, the old flat top with fenders. That's our specialty. And that's just like a flat top, like the old Matt Curtis, you know. And everything comes back, and we cut it perfect, like the feathers of a duck's back, I like to call it. Crew cuts, all the old-fashioned cuts, man. We really hone in on study and focus and, and, and concentrate on, you know. I opened Hollywood's Barbershop in 1999. Before that, I was... Uh, cutting at different shops and I had my own combs made up before that that had had stri have straight razor will travel and had my pager number on it you know and everyone would page me I have like 20 guys at the tattoo shop waiting for me and it just got so crazy that I'd open my own shop and I worked at a bunch of other shops before that and just had such a big following that it was inevitable you know I mean I couldn't really get a good haircut anywhere. No one uses a straight razor anymore. Uh, it was a vanishing, tr vanishing trade, really. And I just wanted to open a spot that would cater to gentlemen only, really. You know, in the 21st century, everything's geared towards women. Salons, spas, the all-women's workout gym. You know, there was no place anymore for a guy just to come and be a guy for an hour. You know, we love women, but some doors are made for men to walk through, and I think barbershop's one of them, you know? What happened was, I, I personally blame it on the Beatles myself, you know? When the Beatles hit the States, the barbers then were trying to keep up with the long shags, and they hung in there best they could, but they, they just couldn't do it, you know? In the 70s, after that, people just kept letting their hair grow long. They were, they were hurting, man, and... After that, in the 80s, you know what happened then, everything became unisex, frosted tips, and all of a sudden, for some reason, somehow, it was cool to go to the salon as a guy, you know, and it really got ruined, man, and I've, I've spent, you know, my time and many years, you know, pioneering the vanishing trade of barbering and getting it, getting it back to where it should be, you know what I mean? And first of all, barbers, were the first doctors in America. Even during the Civil War days, they were the ones out there putting the rag in your mouth and you know had the bottle of Jack if they had to cut your leg off or whatever. In history, that's that's what they did, you know. And the barber pole, you know, signifies that. It's not, you know, the barber pole isn't red, white, and blue for the for the Americana or, or the U.S. The red in the barber pole is for the blood, and the blue in the barber pole is for the veins, and the white was for the clean rags. They were surgeons. And then, then they started doing haircuts and incorporating bathhouses in the back, you know. Even in the cowboy days, you come through town on a horse, you get, take a bath, get cleaned up, get a shave. But they, during that time, they would also pull teeth, and they would do bloodletting. You know, George Washington actually died in, at the hands of a barber because they believed that when you... When you, you got rid of your blood and put get fresh blood, then, then you were healthy, and that was a terrible mistake. I, I mean, every, every barber, you have to have, you have, to have your clippers, and, and they vary um, depending on, you know, what you like. I, I, like, to, I like to use the five stars from Wall and uh, the 76 Austers, two old companies. You know, I, I stand by them. 
and uh, you need your outliner, you need your straight razor, and every single razor that we use is just like you know a tattoo shop. We use a brand new ra razor. We don't strop and hone anymore like the old days. Every blade's brand new, and that's the only thing different that we do really than, than you know the 40s, 50s. Um, and a lot, a lot of, a lot of it's you know clipper over comb, you know, and that's that's where the art artist comes in. It's it's gratifying to make someone look good and feel good, you know. I love it. It's, it's the only thing I'm really good at, I think, man. You know. <laughs>